Hey everybody, we're at it again. This time we're gonna be talking about a hybrid architecture where you have data on-prem, um, you have a server, you have files that you would like to copy to the cloud, or you would like to keep them synchronized with a cloud system. So what that means is that you have a share on the local computer on-prem that you wanna synchronize to Azure Blob. So we're gonna focus on Databox Gateway, which is a system that allows you to do that and allows you to keep two places synchronized, your on-prem files to the cloud. I hope you like this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video and uh, leave comments down in the section down below. I love to hear those comments. I love to read those comments, so please do so. Let's get to it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So what are we doing in this video? In this video, we're gonna talk about setting up uh, Databox Gateway or an Azure Databox Gateway so that we can transfer a lot of video files into Azure Blob service. So as you can see in this diagram, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the on the Databox Gateway here on the left hand side and we're going to set up this Databox Gateway on-prem and this on-prem Databox Gateway is going to connect into Azure and it's going to transfer files into Blob and we have different options on where we can transfer data into. So this is pretty much what we can do. Once the data is in Blob, what we can do from there, since we're talking about video, is we can use an HPC cache, uh, and then we can put that data into the transcoders, and we can have a transcoding farm, and we can transcode the video. And then after that, we can you know, send it out to different um, packagers, and we're not gonna go into that detail. I just wanted to give you an idea on what, why we would wanna put this video files on Azure. So let's go ahead and, and focus on this. Let's go ahead and go into the, uh, into the console and let's get started. Okay, once we are in the console, what we can do is we can go into Azure Databox Gateway. Make sure that you use Gateway because otherwise you will be requesting a data box, which is different than the Databox Gateway. So the Databox Gateway is something that will run on a VM on-prem on and it's gonna take the data and it's gonna move it to Azure. A Databox itself, is, it's a box that you can get like a USB drive, um, you know, as small as a USB drive or as big as, you know, terabytes of data that you wanna move into Azure. In this case, we're gonna focus on the Gateway itself. A Gateway stays on all the time. So we're gonna go ahead and click on Create. Uh, it's going to ask us for the resource group. I'm going to use the data box resource group that I created for this purpose. I'm going to call it my data box GW. Next tags, no tags, and it just tells me um, what, uh, how much it's going to cost and create. Okay, your deployment is complete. Go to resource. And expand this. Once we are here, the, the, it tells you the steps that you're going to take. And the first thing it's gonna say is device setup. So let's go ahead and click on device setup. Uh, it tells you you're gonna have to download the image, you're gonna provision the VM, you're gonna start the VM, and then you're gonna activate it. Uh, downloading the image is just downloading the the, the image that they give you. So we're going to go ahead and click on this download. Okay, while that uh, takes place, what we're going to do is we're going to set up the storage account where this data is going to be moving into. Let's go to home. Let's go to storage accounts. Let's go ahead and create a new one. We're going to put it on the same data box. We're going to call it data box GW storage. We're going to put it on the US East as well and locally redundant. We're just going to make it locally redundant for this test. We're going to click next.
our transfer is still taking place so this is gonna take a while so I'll, I'll stop the video and I'll resume when it finishes okay the download is done now we have a file here it's a zip and it is a Hyper-V image so I'm gonna unzip it I'm going to extract it under downloads Okay, so once it gets extracted, what we have here is we have an image. Uh, it's a VHDX image, and that's what we're going to use on our Hyper-V configuration. So let's go ahead and exit out of that. Let's go back to our console. Let's go into Azure Databox Gateway to see where we are. And this one, uh, we're going to click on this. is the one that we created. Again, it tells you the steps. The first thing is to complete... Um, to complete this setup, go ahead and click on device setup. So we click on this. We already downloaded the image. Again, you can choose Hyper-V. You can um, choose VMware. I chose Hyper-V because I'm going to be running it on a Hyper-V. Hyper I already downloaded the image. Then the next thing, it says start the VM. If you click on this, uh, give me more information. It tells you what the requirements are for the VM. It tells you that it's a minimum of four cores, at least eight gigs of RAM. Uh, it is recommended that you have at least 16 gigs of RAM, one network interface, uh, 250 gig OS disk, and a two, ter a two terabyte virtual disk for the data. Now, this is very important. If you don't have a two terabyte disk, it's not going to start. So I'm going to have a two. Ter I'm going to have a four terabyte drive on, on this computer, but I'm going to partition it into two terabytes, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so let's uh, let's go back to this. The next thing we need to do is to start the VM. So that means open up uh, Hyper-V. So let's I open Hyper-V Manager. And again, this is on the local computer. And we are going to go ahead and click on New, Virtual Machine. And next, we're going to call it My Databox Gateway. I'm going to store it in the location. It's going to be a generation two. And the startup memory. Here we can uh, specify 4,000. You can um, you can uncheck this, use dynamic memory. Uh, the connection, the connection is going to be, um, I have a, a, a LAN external switch so i'm going to call it lan external switch that where it's going to connect is just connecting to my local nic so i can use an existing virtual disk and i'm going to say browse file that i download it this one connect to the virtual disk this is the disk that i that i just downloaded click next and finish The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into settings on this VM that we just created. And the first thing we're going to do is make sure that the processors, because uh, automatically it gives it one processor. But if you remember, the, the requirement is four processors. So we need to up, up this number to four. So now we have four processors. We click apply. And then the next thing we're going to do is we need to um, check the hard drive. Okay, under hard drive here, uh, we need to make sure that we have the four, the two terabyte drive. So we're going to go ahead and click on add, and we're going to create, we're going to create a new one. Um, on, on this one, once it gets to here, we can say dynamic, dynamically expanding, which is fine. Click next. We're going to give it a, a name. I'm going to call it my data box gateway and I'm going to place it on the external drive I can put it on the root which is fine I can create a folder if I wanted to call VM or data gateway whatever whatever you want so click next create the size of the virtual disk and the size it has to be 
at least 2048. Next, and there you go, finish. Okay, that is it. Now we can go ahead and get started. Um, the other thing is the memory, just to make sure that we have enough memory. 8192 it is. Apply, okay. Now we can go ahead and start this. Click on connect so that we can see it running. When you get to this point, the password is password1 with a capital P. Okay, so now this is completed. I have the data box running. And so what I want to do is I want to manage it and start setting it up. So I can go ahead and go here and copy this. So let me go ahead and go here. 192.168.5.200. Connection, advance, and continue. Okay, sign into your device. Again, password one is the default password, um, set up a new password, so password one, old password, and we need to create a new password. Okay, the next thing we need to do is we need to activate it. So we go back to the, to the Azure portal, and we started the VM. Now we need to configure and activate. So we go to the configure and activate, and it tells me I need to generate a key. So I can create, I can click on generate key. And it says that this may take a few minutes, so let's wait. Okay, so it generated a key. We are going to copy this to the clipboard and we are going to go to activation and we are going to paste the key and apply. Okay, successfully activated. All right, so we can click OK. So this is the, the reason we need this key is because all the data that is going to be transferred to the cloud is going to be encrypted. So this is the reason why we need to do this. Okay, now that this is done, we are pretty much done with this device. Now, how do we manage this device? The way that we manage it is we go back to here and we go to the overview and you can see it says that device is online, everything looks good, now we need to create shares. So we're gonna go ahead and add a share. We're going to call it uh, my data box share is going to be an SMB share uh, subscription. And then now we need to point to a storage account. The storage account that we're going to use is the one that, that I created called data box gateway storage. I'm going to just point to that. The storage service, I'm going to, I'm going to connect it to a block blob. So click on that, create a new, I'm just going to call it my data box share and uh, the username, this is for um, when users connect to the share. So the username, I'm going to call it um, G, uh, data box GW admin and a password. And create. So what this is doing is creating the share on the on the gateways so that the data that is copied to that share is going to be automatically replicated to that blob storage account that we just set up. Okay, 
successfully created the share. Now we have one share. So what does that mean? That means that when I go to, for example, I'm on this Mac here, if I do SMB uh, 182, 168.5.200, I should be prompted for a username and password. I'm going to connect as dbgw admin. And there it is, my data box share. So I can click on that. And now I have a connection to that, to that location. So right here is my share. I can as my SMB share. If I go to the storage account on the portal, so let's go to storage accounts. And this is the data box that I set up. If I look at containers, I have one, my data box share. If I open this up, I don't have anything. I don't have any files at the moment. Um, I can transfer files into it, which is the next thing I am going to do. So as you can see, I'm on the, I can see from the portal, the storage account already has a YouTube folder. And if I click on this, I see a subfolder and I see some files here. It's not done yet, so we'll give it a minute. All right, so it's done copying to the share. I am going to eject this one. And now I have the files here on my SMB share, which is all these files here. And if I go to my portal under the storage account, I have all the files here. But as you can see, the process is pretty fast. As soon as you move it, um, it moves up to, to the cloud. What happens if I delete it? Let's delete it. Move to trash, delete. Okay, the item is in use. Okay, let's go ahead and erase. Okay, I guess it's deleting it anyway. And it's gone. So right now it's gone. What happens to the item on the cloud? The answer is nothing. If you delete something from the share, it is not deleted from the from the blob storage. You have to uh, you have to delete it manually, and that is by design. How fast the data is transferred? The answer is is very fast. Depends on your bandwidth and how much bandwidth you have. It does use TCP to connect to the blob. Um, it uses port 443. So if you have a firewall, you need to make 443 available up upstream or um, going out from your network. And it uses TLS to encrypt all the data because all the data going from this share to blob, everything is encrypted using that, that TLS 1.2 uh, protocol. So everything is safe, everything is encrypted. I know a 20 minute video is not an easy thing to go through. And if you made it to the end, thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here watching this video. If you have an idea of another video that uh, you would like to see, let me know. And I will go ahead and gladly do it for you. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And until next time, take care.